Good morning everyone. It is Saturday morning at 6.30. This is Woodcraft by Scott, otherwise known as Iggy. Welcome to Carolina Beach. This is Carolina Beach Lake, literally across the street from the ocean. This is where the farmer's market sets up every week. And we've got the fenders coming out early. I just thought I would put together another video, this time going into far greater detail about my setup. And I just thought I would start off by showing my transportation. Living this close to the event, I get to bring my golf cart. I'm able to load up all of my stuff in a nice, neat package. Come down and spend the day. Now, this event is only five hours. It's from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., which is great during the heat of the summer. It's nice to be able to shut down and be done before it gets too hot. It's a great event. We have uh, approximately 40 to 50 vendors every week. I'd say almost half of them are farmers with actual produce, and then the rest of us are arts and crafts vendors. Now the town has set kind of a limit as to the number of vendors. Uh, some of the local merchants apparently don't like the fact that we're taking money from their pockets as they put it. So anyway, it's an ongoing battle, uh, but we have a nice little system going on here. Everybody seems happy at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and get set up and then I'm going to go into greater detail as to uh, every little bit that I have learned throughout the past 16 months as I've been doing this. And hopefully you can pick up some little tidbits of information. Talk to you soon. All right, so just real quick, a couple of small items. As I'm setting up, I wanted to point out, you never know if you're going to have the level ground. Here it's usually pretty level, but there are times where I do need to put blocks under the table legs. Be sure to have something with you. Fortunately, since I'm doing woodwork, I have spare blocks of wood everywhere. Second thing I wanted to point out, when I first started, I was using regular tablecloths, and down here it gets rather breezy. So I found these, what are called fitted tablecloths. I get them from tablecloths.com or tablecloths.forless.net, something of that nature. I can find that information and provide it if you'd like. But the fitted ones do well. Uh, the wind blows them inward, just as it is right now, but it doesn't blow them up and over your product. The other thing that I did, you'll see these screws on the front of this table. I put holes through the tablecloth that I'll be putting on there so that I can hang my front banner that you'll see uh, later on in the next video clip. Things are coming along, get to take our time. Vendors are setting up everywhere. Just your typical scenario. In my last video showing my setup, I showed my risers, my stands before, but wanted to be sure to include them again in this video. I have three stands. They're actually 24 inch, 30 inch, and 48 inch in length. I'm able to bundle them up to take up very little space. By the way, bungee, bungee cords are gonna be your best friend. I have two smaller stands that hold three puzzles each. I put them at the front of one table to display. Then the actual stands get placed. And the largest one I use for my dogs. And you'll see how and where I place them as I continue and finish my setup. All right, two items I wanted to point out. As I just mentioned, bungee cords are your friend. I use them to hold down my weights for my tent. And speaking of the weights, what I do is water buckets. I don't like transporting 160 pounds of uh, weights or sand or anything else like other folks do, so I bring empty buckets. I have not come across an event yet in which I did not have access to water. So something to keep in mind, uh, if you do a regular venue, make sure that you do have access. I do this on three of the corners at least. Usually on the fourth corner, I'll place uh, some of my heavy materials. And I also put a, uh, a tent post just as reinforcement. Here at the coast, we obviously have very windy conditions at times. So you need to make sure that your tent is properly weighted down. Bungee cords do very well. I also use a bungee cord to hold down my smaller displays. 
expecting 20 mile an hour winds here today. <coughs> Irma fortunately is missing us, but passing uh, close enough to stir up some winds and some surf. And I know I've covered some of this in previous videos, but I want to make sure this one is complete. So as I'm setting up, I wanted to point out that after doing this for a year, you learn lessons. And one of the key things is listen and watch your customers. See what they do, see what their tendencies are. What I realized was I used to put all of my popular breeds on the stand. But what I found was that everybody would walk up and immediately start looking on the table for their particular breed. So I started putting the more popular ones down here. I then put all of the others on the stand and I started putting them in alphabetical order for easy reference and finding. For transporting, I have this one gray tub. I lay out all of the puzzles in layers on cardboard and I'm able to bring about 110 puzzles within this one container. I am gonna have to find a larger one because I'm finding that I'm bringing more and more. Prime example, I've got two or three new items this week that I've never had before. Bat, dragon, rhino is relatively new. Again, I'm still setting up, but give you the idea. This is the stand that people are going to see as they're walking by. Also with the banner. And there will be another banner on the front of the table. Back in a moment. All right, so setup is just about complete for me. Just wanted to show a quick snapshot. Again, about 50 vendors out here today, more than usual. And there's my setup. We're actually closer together than usual, but I still have plenty of room for people to come up to the perimeter of my tent, which is my preferred setup. I may have mentioned uh, last event, my major event, I was able to test two different setups, and I was able to prove without a doubt that the perimeter table setup is much more conducive for sales. Sales increased 50% per hour by doing them inside and making people come in. Uh, a lot of people just uh, don't like doing that. So, anyway, wanted to show everything. I've got three banners. They all tie in together. By the way, Vistaprint is your best friend for business cards and banners. Now, the banner along the top is by a different uh, maker. Vistaprint does not make a top skinny banner for tents. So I will provide information about who that vendor is and let you know. So I tried to highlight my primary or main animals. The unicorn, although new to me, was uh, suddenly became very popular. So I wanted to showcase that. The back banner, the elephant, is always popular. On the left-hand side, you see a picture of my saw. I was being asked a lot when I first got started, you know, how do you do this? What computer are you using? What laser? What CNC machine? And I was able to, you know, just verbally say it's a scroll saw. But a visual is much better. I'll also show that I keep the blades now with me as well. Wind is picking up, you can hear. So I've got my tent buckled down with my buckets of water and tent stakes. So I've got my more popular items here in front with a rescue dog, a dachshund, and a Carolina Beach sea turtle. Again, all the dogs are in one location. The most popular ones are down. Less popular on the rack and in alphabetical order. When customers come and start looking, I will stand a puzzle up. I can't do that because of the wind here. And show them that these are meant to just kind of go on display on a bookcase. What I hope to do later is set my phone camera up so that I can record my usual conversation with customers. Again, just to give you an idea. Uh, a couple of brand new items, the bat and the dragon, I just did this week for the first time. Unicorn has rapidly become popular, the buffalo as well. Two mermaids that I just started making a couple weeks ago also became very popular quickly. More popular items on that stand. Horses, cats, and then over here on the side, and it's a funny story about this. Uh, when I first got started, this is what I was making. I was making these for my granddaughter. And when it came time to start selling the other puzzles, I actually had some of the dinosaurs laying around the house, and I thought, well, I'll take them and see what happens. I didn't really expect much. Turns out these are selling, I mean, like gangbusters. Uh, kids absolutely love them. Parents like that there's an inexpensive option. 
I'm now selling these two for $25 or $15 each, and uh, people are buying them in pairs. Just started making Santa Claus, uh, figured time to start getting into the season. I had my daughter and granddaughter paint four of the puzzles using a watercolor kit just to show what they can look like once painted. I sell the kits now for about five bucks. I haven't sold many of those. Everybody pretty much says uh, we have paint at home. So behind the scenes, I have my duplicates of my po most popular items. I will cover those with a towel once the sun starts shining. Again, big banner. There's a picture of the scroll saw. Now, over here, this is where, you know, I conduct business, if you will. One thing that I always have with me is order forms. This is for people to place orders for custom names, or if I have run out of an animal, I will take an order. Now, let me tell you, uh, this is very much an impulse item buy. If I don't have what they want, they're generally just going to walk away. That's why I display 135 different items, and that's why I bring so many duplicates of the popular ones. I don't want to lose them. So order form is a good thing. I also set up a photo album in which I have a picture of every single item that I make. And this has proven to be very helpful. Again, the few times that I do get orders, it helps to be able to show them what the item looks like. Telling them to go to my website uh, you know, only does so good. Speaking of websites, everybody when they come up, they will ask, do you have a website? Do you have a website? So I eventually did create a website. So on my business card, I have website, Facebook page, and email address. I'm going to tell you what, the website really isn't doing much. What I would suggest and recommend, start with just a Facebook page, somewhere that people can go see your items. Then if you feel that a website is going to do well for you, go ahead and do it. I'm basically paying $30 a month right now, and the only sales I'm getting are you guys buying patterns. Now, I do get an occasional order during the holidays. I expect to get a few more. I also keep a sheet. Uh, this is my log sheet. I track every single item that I sell because I need to know what to make and replace. It also helps me to know what the most popular items are. You know that I shrink wrap my animals. All the duplicates are pre-shrink wrapped. And when I have access to electricity, I shrink wrap on the spot, run my cord, bring a heat gun, and my shrink wrap bags. If you are not currently a vendor and are unaware, be sure you bring plenty of beverages, uh, especially here, you know, at the coast, it gets very hot, you're going to need water. Try to tuck away the items that are uglier out of the way behind the tables. Again, Vistaprint is your friend for business cards and banners. I just wanted to also state that <laughs> my favorite saying is that if you have a difficult task, give it to a lazy man. He'll find an easier way to do it. So slowly but surely, as I've been doing this for the past 16 months, I have found easier ways of doing things. One of the fun things is I used to bring all of these kids' puzzles unwrapped. Uh, I don't know why it never dawned on me to go ahead and shrink wrap all but one. But now that I'm doing that, it's a whole lot easier. I was having puzzles fall apart in the container, things like that. Again, sometimes a little on the slow side, but I do figure things out. So one more pass around. And we'll see how things go. I'm going to try to record myself as I am speaking to customers. See you soon. All right, so one other thing I wanted to point out as I've gotten started is make friends with the other vendors. Get to know them, speak to them. You're going to learn about events that you weren't even aware of. When I got started initially, I had no idea the number of events that are in the area. Live in a beach community. Again, here's the lake. Unfortunately, this summer they are in a, uh, doing a dredging process. First time in decades. It's long overdue. So we've been suffering through that, but it hasn't been as bad as I thought it would be. But anyway, speak with other vendors. You're going to learn about uh, the events in the area. You're also going to learn which ones to avoid. Some of them simply don't do well. And it's better to know up front, pick and choose.
The other thing I wanted to point out in this video clip, uh, power source. Again, if you have access to electricity, great. One thing to keep in mind, especially if you accept credit cards, which I highly recommend because most people don't even carry cash anymore, make sure to bring a phone charger. If you can plug up at, the, at a local outlet, great. If you have an extension cord, even better. If you do not have access to electricity, I have a battery pack, uh, a large one. It's actually for uh, charging up and uh, jump-starting cars. And it has uh, plugs in it and everything. I think I paid a hundred and something dollars for it from Amazon. It has been worth every penny because at events in which I don't have access to electricity, I'm always sure to have a charge for my phone. I'm actually next door to some good friends that also do woodwork and totally different. I actually bought one of these uh, compasses. My wife liked it, so I bought one. But again, make friends with the vendors. They're gonna help you out. It's a nice tight-knit community. Once you start doing this, you're gonna fall in love with it. All right, so the day is actually winding down. It's about a quarter to one. We officially close at one o'clock. Still plenty of people roaming around though, so I'll stay open as long as I need. Had a good day. I've sold 28 puzzles. Two things I wanted to show. Again, I keep track of everything I sell. The items that are circled are items that I sold off of my tables, so I know I have to replace those for display. The other thing I wanted to be sure to mention was that, as I showed you, I have a picture of my scroll saw up on a banner, but I also bring the blades with me. So people will still not believe that they're handmade. So I grab a blade, show it to them. They love to see the level of detail and the fineness of the blade. But again, a good day. And I thank you for watching. I'll talk to you soon.